that's it all the way up. Pretty loud. All right, guys, that is the finished, and nothing's ever really finished. I'm sure I'll do more work on it, but that is the finished Millwright CNC power route enclosure and stand that I built. This is about my machine, which is the Millwright um, CNC power route, but obviously you can do this with pretty much any CNC router. Um, if you're new to the channel, and that's why I clicked on this video, you've just been following the build, um, you already know that. But essentially what this is, is welded aluminum, and um, what I did is I welded up a square base for this thing. So it's just a very much square, very normal shape. So down here, and this is a thicker metal, these pieces down here that are actually supporting the weight of the machine. Let's look inside, shall we? I don't have any lights in here, so it's a little dark. But there's the machine, right? And so the legs are sitting right down here, and they're sitting on, they're sitting on welded aluminum. So this is the machine here, and then this is the welded aluminum. So that is the main stand, and then down below, is a chip tray, um, chip box rather. Oh, I haven't had to take this out yet. <laughs> All right, so you'll just have to take my word for it. This box is removable. It's just made out of cheap ass plywood. Uh, it comes out, but this door is running into my wall because I accidentally mounted this a little too close, which was just my mistake. Because I haven't actually, I just got this together and I'm filming this for the first time today. But this is a door, uh, a box, the big box that covers the entire lower area um, back here in fills up with chips. It's kind of the main reason for building this is to catch all the chips that come off of this thing. So I'm gonna push this back in here and show you guys the rest, but you just have to take my word for that, that comes out. Back here I have my electronics mounted um, just on this outside wall, and then they're coming through and going back into the machine, and there's two power cords, one here and one here. One for the stepper motors and all the electronics and everything, and then one for the router, which is that one right there. Now, this, here, if you can look back there, I know this is super dark, but all that foam insulation back there? All that foam insulation, the purpose of that foam insulation is to make this machine quieter. Just because I like, uh, I just wanted to have a quiet machine. My welder's super noisy, but um, I wanted to have a quiet CNC, especially because this thing is automated, it just runs. So I'm trying to do something else out here in the garage. I didn't want to be hearing it run the entire time. So I insulated it all, and then on top, um, I use this this glue. This glue right here is called Super 77, and Adam Savage uses it a lot. So if you're familiar with his channel, which I have a feeling you probably are if you're watching my channel, um, this stuff is a contact cement. What you do is you just spray it on top of both the foam, and then this is just something called uh, hardwood, which was like literally the cheapest paneling I could find because I'm kind of broke and I had to make this as cheap as possible. So you just spray both sides and you put them together and you like hit them really hard and the actual force of them being pressed together with a high amount of force causes them to set. And essentially you just spray this on and you let it kind of dry out. It, it, you can actually in theory like let it sit for like hours and then come back and they'll go together. But you want to let the, um, the uh, whatever it's dissolved in, the glue, you need to let that um, evaporate off uh, before you put them together. So then I did that and these are press fed in here. So they're just press fed in here for the most part. There's some spots in here where I then um, threaded and taps for some holes like where this has got weight supporting on it. There's a couple parts and then it's also on these angle parts to keep them from falling out. But um, those bolts are in there to uh, keep all that from falling out. So yeah, so like, but like I said, most of them are press fed in there. And so all of these are press fed in there. And then here I have a piece of polycarbonate, which is still really dusty. Cause I, like I said, I just finished this thing today. Um, but the polycarbonate in here is double layered. So there's a piece on the inside and the outside and those are bolted. Um, and right there was 632 screws. Um, so they're just, the hole is drilled and then thread taps and then screwed in there. Um, and that's so that the air in here will act as a noise insulation layer too. Um, if you're familiar with the channel Tech Ingredients, he talks about um, the acoustic properties of this foam really well. And I don't remember it all off the top of my head. I'm not gonna ramble it back to you here, but I'll try to remember to link a video um, for you guys to, to hear and learn about that. But that's why I went with this foam in order to insulate it. I actually haven't even turned it on and figured out how loud it is. Should we do that really quick? We should do that. All right, so I turned it on. Now, you'll never be able to tell exactly how loud this is because it's going to normalize uh, and I don't have a decibel counter on me right now. So I'm just going to tell you how loud it sounds. That's it all the way up. Pretty loud. It was really loud before and now uh, it's still I definitely can still hear it, um, but you can tell I'm not yelling right now, even though you probably are still getting quite a bit of noise in the background. 
I would say that's pretty good. Not quite as quiet as I thought it was going to be, but it won't give me hearing damage. That's kind of what I was worried about. And I would say from like over here, from this distance away, I mean, like I said, you can definitely tell it's running. Eventually, I would like to make a machine that's silent. I think that'd be really cool. But um, that's not bad. And again, just to open it up, and you can hear, that's quite a bit louder. I'm having to talk a lot louder in order for you guys to hear me. And you might not even understand exactly everything I'm saying. Yeah, I'd say that works pretty well. Yeah, that goes from being quite loud to, I mean, still a little bit annoying, but that's much better. And uh, that was cost me a lot of extra money to buy all this foam. Uh, the foam wasn't super cheap. I would say the entire thing for all this was five to six hundred dollars to do the enclosure. The enclosure not including the uh, machine, obviously, just for the enclosure. So, yeah, um, I would say that's a success. That's, uh, that's good. Uh, the only problem is I have to re level the bed now and move it over so I can get that door open. But uh, what I'm talking about with the leveling is um, these guys right here, um, which are self-leveling casters, or not self-leveling, I always say self-leveling, leveling casters, you spin this thing and uh, they come up and down. So they roll around, when you want them to roll around, you bring them up and you put the feet down and you can level them. Now, I thought those things were awesome, still think they're kind of awesome, but they're also really, really hard to move when there's a lot of load under there. So what I had to end up doing is levering them up with a piece of wood, so stacking up a piece of wood, a whole bunch of wood, and then using it um, with a higher uh, moment arm to, to push it up with another piece of wood to take the weight off of them and then spin them and that made it a lot easier to do it but still kind of a pain in the ass. But fortunately I figured out how to do that now so moving this machine over a couple inches isn't going to be a big deal. Um, which means I also have to move my lathe which is just annoying but my lathe is back here. I have another video coming out on that but I have both of my so I have both of my um, machining tools parked right next to each other which is perfect exactly what I wanted. At some point, I'm going to have to get lights in here because it's kind of boring looking right now, and I'm sure there's going to be other things. One thing I may even consider trying to do at some point is maybe try to put some flood cooling in there, but this thing isn't exactly watertight. See what I mean? Not watertight. Yeah, that's there, there, so there's going to be some more stuff coming on this, but for now, it's done, and I'm going to use it to build a goddamn Iron Man suit. This entire channel is about me becoming Iron Man. If you're new to the channel or you just came for this, you should hit subscribe just so you see what it's all about because I'm about to be using this machine, a little bit of this machine, and that welder over there in the corner to build an Iron Man suit uh, made out of aluminum. It's gonna be really, really cool. You don't wanna miss it. To all my subscribers out there, you guys are my favorite. I'm looking at you. I love you. Thank you for being here.